My coverage of CES 2025 is brought to you by Asus, Gigabyte, Kyoxia, GLI, and LG. Check out their latest offerings with the links in the description. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. As some of you know, my house burned down this week. Pretty cool. <laughs> but that won't stop my continued coverage of CES 2025 from the cockpit of my sole remaining asset, this compact sports sedan. At their Venetian suite, Kyoxia showcased the eighth generation of their Bix Flash memory, offering substantial improvements in both performance and density. Their previous design placed the CMOS and Celeray side by side on a single wafer, which introduced several challenges. Not only did this increase the die size, but the high temperatures generated by the Celeray affected the high speed transistors on the CMOS circuitry, ultimately compromising performance. Bix 8 overcomes these limitations with an innovative CMOS bonded array or CBA design which separates the CMOS and Celeray onto two distinct wafers before bonding them together. This approach reduces hot spotting and allows each wafer to be processed more efficiently, boosting both performance and density. The result is an impressive 218 layers, achieving one terabit of storage in TLC technology and two terabits in QLC, setting a new benchmark for NAND flash density. Hi, can I get a six-piece Happy Meal? Yeah, give me one second. Sweet and sour, Diet Coke, and a cheeseburger. Kyoxia also provides high-speed, high-density flash solutions tailored for automotive applications. As vehicles become more complex with integrated systems like infotainment, driver assistance, gauge clusters, and numerous ECUs, the demand for greater storage and processing power continues to rise. Kyoxia meets this demand with its UFS 4.0 technology. Universal Flash Storage, or UFS, is the preferred memory interface and form factor for the automotive industry. And UFS 4.0 is the latest specification, offering sequential write speeds of up to 4,000 megabytes per second, roughly double the speed of UFS 3.1. This enhanced performance enables faster communication between the vehicle systems, improving everything from gear shift response times to overall system efficiency. Kyoxia showcased a Qualcomm development board utilizing their UFS 3.1 solution, but as mentioned, they are in qualification for UFS 4.0, which meets all automotive standards and supports capacities of 128, 256, and 512 gigabytes. They're planning to launch next generation solutions next year, maintaining the same speed, but also expanding to support one terabyte drives. Awesome. Can I get a water too? I might need to shower later. Kyoxia also showcased their drives designed for servers, storage systems, and hyperscale data centers, with all models except the PM7 featuring an NVMe interface. The drives are color-coded for easy identification. Blue labels indicate enterprise drives, while orange labels are for data center drives. There's a key distinction between these two categories. Enterprise drives are built for high performance and low latency, but don't prioritize consistency in these areas. In contrast, data center drives are typically used in large-scale deployments with hundreds or thousands of drives, and in these environments, if one drive experiences a latency spike, it can affect the entire system, making consistent latency far more critical than peak performance. Among the highlights were the XD7P and XD8, the latest PCIe Gen 4 and Gen 5 SSDs, designed for hyperscale servers that use both SSDs and hard drives. These drives feature the E1.S form factor, developed by Meta and Microsoft, which is rapidly becoming the standard for data centers. The CM7 and CD8P models, identifiable by the tab at the top, use the E3.S form factor, which is replacing the traditional 2.5-inch form factor for enterprise and data center applications. Both the E1.S and E3.S drives are equipped with black casings that function as heat sinks to optimize airflow and cooling. Improved heat dissipation reduces the cooling requirements for fans, resulting in lower power consumption and reduced noise levels. <laughs> it's so good! It's so good! <laughs> Kyoxia highlighted its advancements in storage processing for AI as well. The company isn't new to AI and has been utilizing it in various ways for years. In their own manufacturing process, they've leveraged AI to visually identify wafer defects. And in 2020, they collaborated with Osama Tezuka to create the world's first AI-designed manga, Fido, complete with characters and lore. Now Kyoxia is pushing the envelope further with their new Isaac technology to optimize the AI pipeline. Iterating on traditional HNSW methods and Microsoft's DiskAM technology, 
Isaac shifts the index vectors and product quantization vectors from DRAM, which is fast but limited, to storage. This not only reduces DRAM costs, but also enables nearly limitless scalability of the index. The larger the vector database, the more precisely an AI system can be fine-tuned, resulting in greater accuracy and better results overall. I got the toy I wanted. It must be my lucky week. That's going to do it for my coverage of Keoxia here at CES 2025. Stay tuned for more content at the event coming soon, and thanks for watching.